I'm Stormy Omardian, and this is episode three, Praying for His Work and His Purpose. Everyone needs to not only know what they should be doing as their life's work, but they also need to have a sense of purpose for their life. God recognizes that a man's work is a source of fulfillment to him. He says in Ecclesiastes 3.13 that there is nothing better than for a man to enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. The fact that many men are not fulfilled in their work has less to do with what their work is than with whether or not they have a sense of purpose about it. A man who doesn't have that can eventually come to a place where he has worked hard and long, in some cases for so little reward, that he no longer sees a future for himself, at least not one worth living. If there's also a specter of age creeping up on him, he may hear words in his head like, you're not valuable to anyone. You're replaceable. You can't do what you used to. You're too old to learn new things. You don't have it. You have no purpose. This is a dangerous place for a man to be. I knew a man named Gary whose father and grandfather all had difficulty making a living. In fact, it was very late in each of their lives before they were even able to discern what they wanted to do. They went from job to job without any clear leading. They struggled financially. None of them had people around them who prayed for them to have their gifts and talents revealed, to know the calling of God on their lives, to have doors open to them, and to become all they were created to be. History tends to repeat itself if God is not invited to intervene. And I've observed that people who have had friends or family praying for them about this, they seem to find their life's work early. Their careers may not take off immediately, but they have a sense of purpose and of destiny that propels them in the right direction. They don't live with the frustrating aimlessness that some others do. While many parents have an agenda for their children, not enough of them seek out God's plan for their lives. When a child's life is left to chance that way, a kind of vocational wandering can result. There is needless floundering, disappointment, doubt, and despair as he tries to carve out a place for himself. If your husband had that kind of start, your prayers can change his life. You can step in the gap. You can pray for his eyes to be open to see what God wants him to do and where God is leading. Your prayers can help your husband feel appreciated and encouraged enough to recognize he has worth no matter what he does. You can assure him that God has uniquely gifted him with ability and talent and has something good ahead for him then pray for God to reveal it and open a door of opportunity which no man can shut. Your prayers can pave a path for him. Even if your husband already has a successful career, it's still good to pray that he is where God wants him to be and that everything will continue to go smoothly. My husband, who is a songwriter and a record producer, said he felt my prayers have prevented him from working with the wrong clients. He has never worked with anyone who is difficult, weird, evil, or unsuitable, which is nothing less than a miracle in his business and in his time. He knew I always prayed that God would lead him to the right people and remove from his path those who would be trouble. While your prayers may not ensure a completely trouble-free road for your husband, they can certainly steer him clear of many problems. If your husband is a hard worker, make sure he has times of rest and enjoyment to do things that entertain him and give him a reprieve from the weight of a lifetime of supporting a family. 
Men need periods of refreshing. If they don't have them, they are prone to burnout and temptation of all kinds. Your prayers can help your husband understand that the true meaning of life doesn't come from work. It comes from following God. You can pray for your husband to find that perfect balance. The Bible says in Psalm 90, 17, let the beauty of the Lord, our God, be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Everyone has a purpose. It's the reason we exist. It's our life's mission, objective or plan. Generally, we're here to glorify God and do His will. How that specifically translates in our lives is unique to each of us. Your husband needs to know the reason he exists. He needs to be sure his life is not just an accident, but that he's here by design. He must be certain he was created for a great purpose. We all need that. So do you. But that's another book called The Power of a Praying Woman. I wrote it to help women learn to pray for themselves, to get closer to God, to find their purpose and become who God made them to be. When you pray for your husband to discover his purpose and do what he was created to do and become what he was created to be, he can find fulfillment. And this will only contribute to your happiness as well. If I've learned anything being married nearly five decades, it's that a wife can't put pressure on her husband to be something, but she can pray for him to become it. She can pray that he be molded according to God's plan and not anyone else's. Then who he becomes will be determined by whether he hears God's call on his life or not. For God has called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. That's from 2 Timothy 1.9. Your husband is predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. And that is found in Ephesians 1, 11 and 12. But you still need to pray that he hears God's call so that who he is and what he does lines up with God's purpose for his life. You can always tell when a man is not living in the purpose for which God created him. You sense his unrest. You get a feeling something is not quite right, even if you can't put your finger on what it is. When you're around a man who's fulfilling his calling and doing what he was created to do, you're aware of his inner direction, confidence, and deep security. How do you feel about what your husband is doing with his life? Do you lack peace about it because he's on a path that's unfulfilling or beating him down or going nowhere? If so, then pray, Lord, take my husband from this place he is in with regard to his work and reveal to him what you've called him to be. Open doors to what he should be doing. Praying that way doesn't mean your husband will suddenly be pulled out of what he's doing and dropped into something else. It can happen that way, but often what takes place is a change in the man's perspective. I have a friend named David who has worked for years in a factory making airplanes. When he heard the call of God on his life, he knew he was to help troubled teenagers in low-income families. He also knew he wasn't to leave his job to do it. As it turned out, his work provided enough money to support his family while it afforded him exactly the kind of hours he needed to do what he felt called to do. He has organized food distribution to needy families, free concerts for underprivileged teens, Christian outreaches for the unsaved, and peace talks between rival gangs. He has done as much to bring restoration to his strife-torn city as any one man could possibly do. 
His is by no means an easy job, but it is fulfilling. And he has a sense of purpose that is unmistakable when you're around him. Physically, he's not a large man, but he is a spiritual giant. And you know it when you're in his presence. His wife also hears God's call in his life, and she supports it in every way she can. Whatever God has called your husband to be or do, he has also called you to support it and be a part of it, if in no other way than to pray, encourage, and help in whatever way possible. For some women, that means creating a good home, raising the children, being there for him, and offering prayer support. Other women may take an active role by becoming a partner or helper. In any case, God does not ask you to deny your own personhood in the process. God has called you to something good too, but it will fit in with whatever your husband's calling is. It will not be in conflict with it. God is not the author of confusion or strife or unworkable situations. He is a God of perfect timing. There is a time for everything, the Bible says. The timing to do what God has called each of you to do will work out perfectly if it's submitted to God. If your husband is already moving in the purpose for which God has called him, you can count on the enemy of his soul coming to cast doubt, especially if he hasn't yet seen anything close to the finished picture or realized the success he had envisioned. Your prayers can help cast away discouragement and keep it from taking hold. It can help your husband to hear and to cling to God's revelation. It can cause him to live his life on purpose. One of the reasons a man may not understand his purpose is because he has fear that overtakes rational thinking. There are many things in this world to be afraid of, and only a fool would say otherwise. But when fear seizes us, tormenting and ruling our lives, we have become captive to it. Men are often susceptible to that because without even realizing it, they get attacked by the what ifs. What if I can't make enough money? What if something happens to my wife and children? What if I get a terrible disease? What if my business fails? What if I can't be a good father? What if I become disabled and can't work to support my family? What if I'm overpowered or threatened? What if no one respects me? What if I'm in an accident? What if I die? In Psalm 48, 6, it says, Fear can take hold of a man and keep him from all God has for him. There's a difference between a fearful thought that comes to mind as a prompting to pray for a particular thing and a tormenting spirit of fear that can paralyze a person. You don't want to undermine the promptings of the Holy Spirit to your husband's heart, but you do want to support him as he battles destructive fear. The only kind of fear we are supposed to have is the fear of the Lord. When you have the fear of the Lord, God promises to deliver you from your enemies, 2 Kings 17, 39, protect you from evil, Proverbs 16, 6, keep his eye on you, Psalm 33, 18, show you his mercy, Luke 1, 50, give you riches and honor, Proverbs 22, 4, supply everything you need, Psalm 34, 9, reveal all you need to know, Psalm 25, 14, bless your children and grandchildren, Psalm 103, 17, give you confidence, Proverbs 14, 26, and a satisfying life, Proverbs 19, 23, give you longevity, Proverbs 10, 27, and the desires of your heart, Psalm 145, 19. What more could you ask for? Pray for the comforting, securing, and perfect love of the Lord to surround your husband and deliver him from all his fears. Would you pray with me about this? Lord, I pray that you would bless the work of my husband's hands. May his labor bring not only favor and success and prosperity, but great fulfillment as well. 
If the work he's doing is not in line with your perfect will for his life, reveal that to him. Show him what he should do differently and guide him down the right path. Give him strength and faith and a vision for the future so he can rise above any propensity for laziness. May he never run from work out of fear, selfishness, or a desire to avoid responsibility. On the other hand, help him to see that he doesn't have to work himself to death for man's approval or grasp for gain beyond what is a gift from you. Give him the ability to enjoy his success without striving for more. Help him to excel, but free him from the pressure to do so. I pray that you will be Lord over his work and may he bring you into every aspect of it. Give him enough confidence in the gifts you placed in him to be able to seek and find and do good work. Open up doors of opportunities for him that no man can close. Develop his skills so that they grow more valuable with each passing year. Show me what I can do to encourage him. I pray that his work will be established secure, successful, satisfying, and financially rewarding. I pray that the desires of his heart will not be in conflict with the desires of yours. May he seek you for direction and hear when you speak to his heart. In Jesus' name, I pray. You know, if your husband is open to it, pray out loud over him. Even many unbelieving husbands are open to this. Include praying a scripture over him as well. For example, pray this scripture from Isaiah 11:2. May the spirit of the Lord rest upon you, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. There are many other scriptures that relate to whatever your husband needs to hear right now. Just remember that including a scripture always adds power to your prayers.